Making a music video can be hard. Hours sitting in front of a screen, piecing together footage. Well, today I'm going to show you a solution for that. I'm going to show you a lightning fast method for creating cool and creative music videos using the free open source software Blender. I was inspired by this Yeet Out The Way music video directed by Cole Bennett. As you guys can see, you only need one performance shot. That's it. Then you make a quick 3D environment, toss in some 3D objects, which you can download for free on the internet, and then you just animate the camera. So let's hop into Blender and I'll show you exactly how you can do that yourself. As always, if you guys are new here, consider leaving a like on the video for the YouTube algorithm. Helps a huge amount. Subscribe if you do enjoy for more educational content like this and comment down below anything you'd like to see next. By the way, if you're looking for any plugins, presets, extensions to save you time and create cool effects, my digital asset store is at the top of the description. First things first, we need our subject. We need our one take green screen shot. Now, if you guys don't have any green screen footage, you can instead rotoscope out any clip just make sure there isn't too much movement and make sure the entire full body is showing that'll work best for our composition here i found some royalty free green screen footage on the internet you can go to your effects in presets and after effects and search for the key light effect and then just click the eyedropper and select the green to remove it you guys can switch the color channels to the alpha to see just black and white and then you can click open the key light effect and change the clip white and clip black sliders to make everything look like a silhouette once you're done with that, change the color channel back to RGB and you have a nice looking key, assuming your green screen was lit well. Of course, you guys don't need to use After Effects to do this. You can composite out green screen in Blender. So I'll leave a tutorial down below on green screen compositing in After Effects if you're still stuck and green screen compositing in Blender if you wanna just skip all the way to Blender. So to get this keyed footage into Blender, go up to File, Export, and add it to the Render Queue. Go ahead and click here to change the output format to QuickTime. We need a .mov file for this and make sure for the channels you select RGB plus A so that it exports with that transparent background. Now we can go ahead and fire up Blender. You're gonna need to enable one add-on for this that comes included with Blender. Just go up to Edit Preferences and in the Add-ons tab, search for Import Images as Planes. Go ahead and check that on and then go to File, Import, Images as Planes and select your footage. You wanna change the material output to Emission and then go ahead and import it. We can change to our rendered view by clicking here. We can actually see our footage. If we click play, now we have any footage we want in our 3D software. Obviously it is a 2D image, so you have to keep that in mind, but we're not gonna be doing any crazy 3D perspective. There's an amazing video by Ian Hubert talking all about green screen tricks, motion tracking with green screen, and all the ins and outs of using images as planes, but actually having them walk around. So I highly recommend you watch that if you wanna get more in depth with this and maybe have your character walk around and interact with the environments. If not, again, just shoot where your character is standing still or doing some minimal motion and we'll be good to go. So now that you've done that, we need an environment for our character. And of course you guys can choose any environment you like. I'm gonna show you how to create a desert environment like in that Yeet one take music video. But of course you can look up forest environment, castle environment, anything that fits the vision you want for your music video. Just search a little Blender environment tutorial to start building your scene. So for a desert or mountains, here's an easy tip to get you started. You wanna click Shift A and you wanna add in a plane. Let's go ahead and click S and I'll write 200 just to make this plane larger. Now on this plane, we want to subdivide and then deform it to actually shape our mountains and hills. To do that, you wanna to go to the modifiers with the plane selected. You want to add in your subdivision surface, change it to simple so it's not all broken up like this. And then I'm just gonna click this up, maybe like six subdivisions. Now we're also gonna add a displace, but before I do that, let's go in here quickly and just make a sand texture. I like doing this before I add in all the modifiers because sometimes adding all these things can crunch the texture. So an easy sand texture. Let's go to our material properties and just click new. We'll name this sand. Let's go ahead and open up the shader editor here. And we'll start off by just choosing a color for our sand. Keep in mind here, we're in the rendered shading mode, so we'll switch here so we don't have to have any lighting influence. And then we'll click Shift A and we'll search for a noise texture. And then we'll click Shift A and search for a bump texture. And we'll connect these together. So bump goes into the normal, factor goes into the height. I went to my world settings here and just bumped up the strength. I went back to my rendered shading mode to show this a bit better. Bump up the strength if you're not able to see this. And then I'm gonna take the scale and just keep raising that up. You guys will start to see this sort of sand-like texture from our noise. We can also add in some detail. 
and distortion if you'd like. So that looks okay in terms of the overall texture for our hills and our sand. Let's go ahead and just select this and click Control T. Just add our texture coordinate node in our mapping and of course you can change the scale for that if you want. Make sure you have Node Wrangler in your add-ons on as well to be able to actually do that. Should be included free in all blenders. So now let's go ahead and make the hills of our sand. So let's go back to our modifiers and we're gonna toss in a displace. And then once we've done that, you want to go ahead and click new to create a new texture. To be able to actually change this texture around, we go down to the texture section, texture properties, and then we can change our type to Veroni or Verona, however you pronounce that. And immediately we already have these spiky mountains. And this is where I said you can use this tutorial to create sand dunes or mountains or whatever. Really just depends on how you tweak these settings. So let's scroll down here and we can change around the size to kind of smooth that out. You can change around your intensity and you can even change the feature weights here to kind of mix and match different parts. So go ahead and mess around with those settings to create whatever environment you guys want to create. It's all up to you. You guys can also go back into the modifiers and you can change around the strength. You wanna make that a little bit higher up. Now, if for any reason, whenever you add your displace modifier, things are looking a little bit jagged or maybe the texture is broken up, what you guys want to do, you wanna to go to your modifiers and just apply these first. Only do this once you're completely set. This is what you want your environment to be. So maybe make a duplication and save that or whatever. But what you can do is apply these and then just add in another subdivision surface and keep bumping that up until it's smooth to your liking. Keep that in mind. I'm just gonna undo that. So once you guys have the shape of your environment all set, let's talk about actually manipulating the lighting of this environment, making it look a bit more cinematic. So you guys can stick with the EV renderer if you'd like. That's what I'm using right now, a lot faster. But if you want things to look a bit better, you can use the cycles render. So we'll put this on cycles. We'll change the device to GPU, and then we'll put the max samples here down to like 64, so it doesn't have to load as much. Render, we don't need that much. We can put it to like 150. Go to color management, and we're going to change the look to a high contrast, and starting to look already a lot better. Now, alternatively, if you don't like cycles, you guys can use EV and use like ambient occlusion. Go to your world settings and like load in an HDRI from Polyhaven. But an alternative, if you guys don't want to use EV, that I think looks a lot better, let's go back to cycles. Let's go to our world settings here. You can click this yellow dot where you normally would load in your environment texture. And instead we can load in a sky texture. So let's lower the strength of the sky texture. Let's add some ozone, have some blues in there, add some more air and lower the dust. I love this a lot because you can actually change where the sun is like this. Get some nice realistic shadows, full control over the environment, and it looks pretty good even if you were to keep that as a real background. If you don't want the background in there, you guys could always go to your render settings, film, and check on transparent. So up to you. And again, keep in mind this sky setting only works, this Nishida sky setting only works in cycles. All right, so we have our environment. We have our character here. And all we need to do is set up a camera to point at this character, create a little animation for it, and then just add any designs to this environment we'd like. Let's go ahead and add in a new camera. So we'll click Shift A, and we'll go to Camera. We'll delete the defaults. And let's position this new camera over where we'd like it. So to have this view up, just clicked here, went to 3D viewport. This is my plane with my person. Go ahead and just bring that over to where we need it. Switch to the camera view and make any last adjustments. Because we loaded this in as an emissive material, you can see it's actually casting realistic shadows here from our sun source, which is pretty nice. Now, another cool thing that I should mention, if you want to customize the background at all, maybe you don't like how a hill looks or maybe you wanna add a hill, you could always select your plane and just click tab to go into edit mode. And from here, you can alter any of this just by using your selection tools and by using things like clicking G, clicking S to scale, clicking E to extrude. You guys have full creative control over how you want your environment to look just by easily going into edit mode. 
So have fun with that part of it. So let's finish this off by setting up a little camera animation. So we can go ahead and just pan this closer by taking our Y axis. Maybe you want like a close up to start. And another side tip here, you can go over to your camera settings. You can mess with the focal length. You have full control over the cinematography of how you want this to look. If you want it like crazy experimental, if you want like a close up lens, you can check on realistic depth of field, use this dropper and just have it focusing on your subject matter. And then you can control the aperture here too, which is really nice. So let's create a little keyframe animation for our camera. I'll go ahead and change this to our timeline. And I know everything's flipped upside down, but here is where our camera is. And here's our timeline. So we're going to select this camera. We're going to go to the object properties and just keyframe everything at the starting position. So just click and drag down and then let's drag to where we want our animation to end and simply just take your camera here. If you want, you can even switch this back, take the Y axis and move it back. Maybe try and keep that centered a bit more. And then always remember, once you've done that, this is orange. You need to either hover over this and click I or just click and add in those keyframes to actually set them in place. So now we can go to our timeline. We'll have a nice little zoom out animation of our camera where we can show off this environment that we designed. So what they did in the original Cole Bennett music video is just grab a bunch of 3D objects and, this ch and then just toss them into the desert. So you guys can get creative with this. Again, I'm recreating that music video. I don't want you guys to steal the exact concept of that music video and just copy and paste. I'm just showing you a quick tool set to make a quick music video. So if you want, you can toss in 3D objects. You can do whatever with the environment that you so please. I'm gonna show you how I can place and compile those objects in how I can render out and then I'll even hop in After Effects and show you some end compositing tricks. So taking a look at the original music video they have a clown head they have a carnival wheel a sword a flag going in there so you guys can play with dynamics and physics wind they have some cars they have UFO spaceships skulls any which way thing you guys can think of this is basically just a giant playground. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that sort of aspect of it. Again, you guys can find free 3D objects from TurboSquid.com. Just go to price here and select free. Sometimes they'll toss paid ones in there. So if you guys want to, you can. You can model yourself, of course. It'll just take a bit more time. Here's one on CG Trader. So we'll start downloading some of these. You guys want to get either FBXs, OBJs, or Blender project files. Once you've downloaded a bunch of assets, it's really as simple as going up to file, import and importing in the type of object that you want in your scene. Once you have it there, just click G to grab S to scale and position it in your scene where you want it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and do a time lapse here and just show you me adding in a bunch of 3D objects. I'll give you some useful tips along the way as I do show you this. So useful tip number one, if you ever import an object that has a bunch of sub objects making up the whole, what you can do to easily move it around and group it into one is click shift A and create an empty. Then you just hold down control and select every single part object and then click and select the empty last. In object mode, you can click control P to parent all of those parts to that one empty axis. So that way it's grouped into one singular object. You can still expand the empty and see all those individual parts, which is useful for shading or adding custom materials to specific parts. But in terms of transformation, all you have to do is select the empty and just like everything else, click G to grab and move it around. Click S to scale or to rotate and composite it into your scene as you like. Now the second useful tip has to do with creating materials or applying textures. A lot of the 3D objects you are going to download usually come with some associated textures. So to easily apply that, we're gonna again use that Node Wrangler add-on. Again, if you haven't already, go up to Edit Preferences and search for Node Wrangler in your add-ons and just enable it. Once you've done that, all you need to do to apply an object's textures to it, go to your shader editor, click on the principal shader here and just click Control Shift T. That'll open up your file explorer. Go ahead and navigate to the folder that has all those textures and just highlight them and, and click accept. Node Wrangler will automatically put them in nice organized boxes. It'll automatically load all of the necessary textures where they need to be. Very useful for applying things fast. And for my last tip, let's talk about how to create a waving flag simulation, just like in that Cole Bennett music video. This is actually pretty easy. All you need to do is click Shift A and create a plane. You guys can use the scale tool on the left to scale that flag size to your liking. Let's go ahead and click tab to go into edit mode and then we're gonna right click on this flag and subdivide it. I'll give it around 20 cuts. And then I'm gonna select the vertexes on the left side of the flag here. 
by just holding down alt and left clicking to select that line. Let's go to the vertex group section on the right. We're gonna click the plus sign to create a new group and then we're going to assign it. Then let's go to the simulation section and we're going to add a cloth simulation. If you scroll down to shape, you're gonna find this little pin group section. Go ahead and select that vertex group we set up earlier and that way whenever we click play, our flag will actually stand up. So it's flopping to the ground now. Let's go ahead and just rotate this so it's upright. And then we can click shift A and go down to force fields and add in a wind. Position that next to the flag and then go over to the force field sections and change the strength to around 1500. Just like that, we have an easy flag floating in the wind. You guys can select the flag, go to object and shade smooth. And you can also go down to the collision section for our class simulation and check on self collisions. So other than that, I created a flagpole just by clicking shift A and adding in a cylinder and again, scaling that to my liking. Go on the internet and save whatever image you want to place on your flag and then change your bottom workspace to the UV editor. We're gonna select the flag and click tab to go into edit mode and then just click A to select all the faces. In the UV editor, go ahead and click this drop down and select the image you'd like to place on the flag. And then still in object mode, click U and unwrap the flag so that you can actually see how it's gonna be projected onto this image. You guys can resize this projection just by clicking S, clicking G, clicking R to rotate and align that image onto your flag however you'd like it. All right guys, so I went ahead and finished adding in all of those 3D objects that I downloaded earlier. I think this looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and render this out and bring it back in After Effects to finish up. So in our render settings, we wanna go down to the film section and make sure transparent is checked on because we're gonna add our own sky later. Let's go back down to color management and click on view transform. And I'm going to set this to filmic log so that we have a better starting point to color this in After Effects and Premiere. Then I'll go to my output settings. I'm gonna change the file format to TIFF and then I'm gonna set up a little folder where I'd like my render to output to. Once that's all ready, we can go up to render and render the animation. All right guys, so in After Effects, let's go ahead and create a new composition here. In our project bin, we can right click and go to import multiple files and let's navigate to that folder that we set up in Blender. So here's mine, you can see all of our frames rendered out. I'm gonna select the first, import as footage and click import. Then we'll click done and here we go. So everything looks pretty good. All right, so next I'll go on pexels.com and search for some cloudy sky royalty free footage. I'll go and drag this straight into After Effects. and I'll place it below both of these layers. Looks pretty cool. Now let's take this into Adobe Premiere to color grade. So I'll create a new sequence in Adobe Premiere, and then in my project bin, I'll click this blank page, new item, and I'll create a transparent video. Drag this into our timeline and just give it some time. Let's right click on it and click replace with After Effects composition to create a dynamic link between Premiere and After Effects. Then all we have to do is take the composition that we are working on here, as you see, it's called render, We'll just drag and drop this into our linked comp and then we can even trim this so that we have the time we need. So I'll trim comp to work area, file save, and we should now see this in Premiere. So this is all the parts of the comp we trimmed in After Effects. We don't need that. So we'll click C and delete it. And in here, I can click and go to my Lumetri workspace. Again, go to window workspaces and color. Go to creative and just load in a LUT. You can go with something with color or you guys can go one of these built-in black and white LUTs. And there we go, I think that looks pretty similar. Maybe we could just take down the saturation a little bit. But overall, that is a quick example of how you can create a one-take music video using Blender. But I think this is something you can throw into your portfolio that you can offer to clients, that can save you time, that can make you money, and you can have fun doing. As always guys, thank you so much for watching, thank you so much for supporting, and I'll see you guys in the next one.